Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angel and today I am sharing some more simple and beautiful Easter DIYs. For this first project, I picked up these little clothespins. They say doll pins, but they're like vintage clothespins from my Dollar General. I think they were maybe $2 per pack. And the first thing I'm going to do is just drop these down into a little bit of coffee. I want to stain these up as dark as possible, so I'm just stirring them around. And then I think I let them sit for maybe about eight hours. Now, I also learned a little trick from Pinterest if you want to make your wood look really old and vintage drop some of the coffee grinds on top of whatever you are staining with the coffee and this is going to actually leave kind of darker almost black marks all over your pieces of wood now this did work pretty good to leave some darker spots on here you can't really tell in the video but they did have a few more darker spots on them but it wasn't just quite enough for what i was going for so i'm taking some burnt umber acrylic paint i'm just dabbing that onto my finger and dabbing it back onto the plate so that i barely have any on there and and then I'm rubbing this all over these clothespins. Now, once I aged up all of my clothespins, I set these aside to make sure they were fully dry from the coffee and the paint. And then I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree rub-on transfers. And I just picked out a couple. This is like the farmhouse transfers from Dollar Tree. But it has like really cute florals. And there's also some carrots and eggs on there. And I thought this would be perfect perfect for spring so I am just picking some and rubbing these on to my clothespins. This next project is actually inspired by a wood wall art piece I saw at Kirkland's, but I found this frame at my local thrift store and it already has a wood backing for it. So I figured I could use this to do a little bunny silhouette with some florals. Of course, the first thing I wanted to do was paint this frame. So I'm going in with three coats of white chalk paint and I'm only doing the frame. For the bunny template, I just traced out a bunny onto some parchment paper from my computer and just made sure that it fit on that wood piece. Then I traced around that template onto some of Dollar Tree's removable Cricut vinyl so that I could stick this down onto the back of the wood piece. Now, obviously, this piece isn't staying on the back of the wood piece. I'm just using it to get the shape of the bunny. So just make sure that all of your edges are pressed down really tight because we're going to go over this with three coats of the white chalk paint. Then once I had all three coats on and it was completely dry, I was able to just remove that Cricut vinyl. This stuff does work pretty nicely with paint over top of it as far as bleeding goes. There were just a few spots and I was just able to just scratch those off with my little Cricut tool. Now for the floral stencil that I'm going to be using for the inside of the bunny, I actually got this huge pack of floral stencils from Amazon and I just picked one that I really liked and I'm going to go ahead and kind of place that over. It wasn't big enough to go all the way across the bunny, but I'm going to fix that in just a little bit. But first, I did tape this down with a little bit of painter's tape, and I'm doing two very light coats of my white chalk paint over top of this stencil. And you may notice I didn't tape the bottom because since we're using the same color white chalk paint that we used on the background, this is just going to blend in if you get some of the stencil down at the bottom. 
Once I had the first stenciling done, I'm going to remove that, wipe my stencil off, and I flipped it over so that I could do the tail end of the bunny. Now this time I made sure that I used the painter's tape to just mark off only the piece that I still needed to do and then once again I just went in with two light coats of my white chalk paint. This next project is inspired by these cute little bunny heads. They have the glasses. I'm sure we've all seen them, but I wanted to try to make a smaller version. So I actually found these finial knobs from my thrift store. They were $2.99, but they were actually half off. So I picked these up and then I picked up one of these little wood cubes from my Dollar Tree. And this is gonna be the base for my bunny head. So I did go ahead and draw drill down into the center of this so that I'm able to screw that little knob onto there. I just used some of my burnt umber paint mixed with a little bit of water to stain this. I just put it all over the wood block and then used a paper towel to wipe some of it back off. But I do think this would also look really nice painted the same color as the bunny head. And then once it was dry, I was able to screw that finial knob down into the wood block. Now to make the ears, I'm just going to be using some of my air dry clay. And I'm going to kind of roll this out a little bit thicker than normal because I definitely want these to be substantial enough to hold up on top of the head. Hopefully that makes sense, but basically I want these to be thick enough so that the glue will have a lot of clay to hold on to, if that makes sense. But so once I had this rolled out, I went ahead and just cut two little bunny ears out of there. Then I went back in and I'm just tapping and rubbing the sides down. Then I just used my pinky finger to kind of shape that around it so that it would look like bunny ears. Then I'm going to attach these ears while they're still wet so that I can shape them a little bit more after I super glue these on the top. Here I'm just trying to color match the ears. That knob was kind of an off-white whitewash color so I'm just mixing up some of my white chalk paint with a little bit of my apple barrel antique white to try to match that color then to match the whitewashing I am just mixing up a little bit of my white chalk paint with some water and I'm actually just gonna go back over this entire thing now I don't know why I didn't remove this to start with but eventually I did remove it from the wood block and then just rub that paint and water all over this then take a paper towel to wipe some of it off. Now to make the glasses for my bunny, I'm just using some of this Dollar Tree floral wire and I cut down two pieces that were about the same size and I'm just twisting those two pieces together to make this a little bit thicker so that the glasses will be more noticeable. And then once I get this all twisted, I'm actually just using my finger, wrapping this around to make the lens part and I don't know if you can tell or not, but once I wrap this around my finger right here, I'm putting it back through there just to make a little knot for the frames and so it won't slip out of there. And then I just did the exact same thing on the other side to make the second frame. There was a little bit of excess on one of the sides of the frame, so I was able to just snip that off. Then I kind of pressed the frames in a little bit on the sides right here so that it will hug the bunny's head. Thank you. 
For this final project, I again just traced out a bunny from my computer onto some parchment paper and cut that down. I made this one a little bit bigger than the other template that I made because I want to make a little stuffed bunny with a pocket. So for this, I'm also going to be using some scrap drop cloth that I already had. Now I just folded this in half, laid my template on it, and then I'm just using a fine point sharpie to mark all around this bunny template. Now before I cut this out, I did want to use the sewing pins to attach both my pieces together so while I'm cutting it, it won't be moving around or shifting in any direction. And then once I had it all pinned, it just made it so much more easier to cut this out. And as always, to glue this together, I am using some of my Aileen's Fabric Fusion glue. And I'm just doing the top, the sides, and leaving that bottom part open so that I can stuff it later. And as I was gluing this, I did leave maybe a quarter to a half an inch gap at the edges. Then I'll just set that aside for about two hours to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on the pocket. So this is just another piece of... Of that drop cloth that came from when I cut the bunny out and you can see here I did fray the edges except for the bottom to decorate the pocket I'm going to be using some of these stamps that I got from Amazon if you saw my last video I actually used the butterfly stamps that came with this pack of stamps but for this one I am using a little floral stamp and then I'm going to layer it with one of the frame stamps Then to add just a little more detail, I'm just using one of those corner stamps in two of the corners. After the glue had dried in the bunny, then I was able to go ahead and stuff this. I'm just using some leftover stuffing that I had from an old pillow. And I'm not putting a ton of stuffing in this because I do want it to kind of be able to stand up and not be overstuffed. And to close the final side, I'm just using some hot glue with my Gorilla Glue glue sticks and then using those same glue sticks to attach the pocket. Then I decided that I kind of wanted it to look like it was stitched even though it's just glued on. So I'm using that fine tip Sharpie again to make little stitch marks around three sides of this. And for the final touches, I'm just adding in some of this Dollar Tree Spanish moss and a few pieces of dry baby's breath that I already had. And that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.